Christians have long believed that Jesus Christ was crucified by the authority of the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, in either the year AD 30 or AD 33. More than 100 years later, a Gnostic heretic named Basilides suggested that Jesus was not crucified, that Jesus had traded place with the man who helped Jesus carry the cross, and that this man, not Jesus, was crucified. Basilides taught this idea not because he had access to new historical information, but because it accommodated his Gnostic heresies that Jesus really was not human, really did not suffer, etc. In the 6th century, Muhammad, the founder of Islam, picked up this idea and taught that Jesus had not been put to death. Unfortunately, this erroneous idea is found in the Quran. Non-Muslim scholars do not doubt that Jesus was crucified on a Roman cross. Not only do all four first-century New Testament Gospels describe the crucifixion of Jesus, the Apostle Paul, who is acquainted with some of the apostles of Jesus and some of his family members, frequently speaks of the cross of Jesus in his several letters. The first-century Jewish historian Josephus also refers to Jesus being put to death by Pilate. Early second-century Roman historian Cornelius Tacitus states that Jesus, the founder of Christianity, suffered the death penalty during the reign of Tiberius by sentence of the governor Pontius Pilate. Late, century, late second century Lucian of Somosata refers to Jesus as the man who was crucified in Palestine and as, a, and as the uh, crucified sophist. What we have are many first century writings that refer to the crucifixion of Jesus and at least two second century non-Christian writers who refer to the crucifixion and countless second century Christian writers who refer to the crucifixion of Jesus. Why should all of this early testimony be set aside in favor of the Quran, written 600 years after the event? It is normal practice for historians to depend on early sources, especially when these sources are numerous and written by people of diverse perspectives, Christian, Jewish, and pagan, and accurately reflect the customs, people, and events of the period they describe. So tonight, the question is asked, was Jesus crucified? That indeed is a question that will be debated tonight. It's Thursday, April 12, 2012. I'm Chris Conway, and you're watching Debate Night. Again, was Jesus crucified is the topic, and that will be debated by our two participants tonight, Sheikh Kareem Abdul Zayed and Dr. Craig Evans. Uh, first off, Imam Kareem Abdul Zayed is the, is the Aman of Colorado Muslim Society, CMS. He is a PhD candidate in Islamic studies with the American Open University of Alexandria, Virginia. His studies are concentrated in fundamentals of Islam, Quranic and Hadith sciences. Imam, Imam Kareem is a, a, a Haifs al Quran, having committed the complete text of the Quran to memory. His love and passion of teaching of Islam led to his founding of Tasfir al Quran Institute, a full time HUVS, Arabic and Islamic Studies uh, program with branches in Atlanta, Maryland, Shakriya, Egypt, and Denver, Colorado. An esteemed Daya, who one who gives one who gives Daya or performs outreach, uh, Iman Karim is a fierce advocate of the understanding of the Quran and the correct interpretation of authentic hadith who is determined to share a correct view of Islam. As such, he continues his pr platforms as a presenter for Huda TV and uh, Gideas TV, and to do this through presentations such as Ramadan it is Your Second Chance, Story of Hajj, The Inevitable Journey, uh, Righteous Companion, Building a Better Future, and the Best of Stories from the Quran. Currently, Aman Karim can be reached for interaction on the broadcasting of Let's Talk About It, which airs on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday on Gideas TV. He continues his passion of teaching Islam as a professor of the Sharia Academy of America's Mishka University, leading students in the understanding of Islamic creed, al ikida al Islamia, and his expertise in Tahir al Quran, skill in explaining the meaning of the Quran, has resulted in numerous invitations to serve as a lecturer for individual groups, training, uh, motivations, workshops, and conferences. He is a producer and lead presenter for workshops at the Strengthening the Understanding of Islam as a Faith. These workshops include burial and shrouding, instructional seminar, how to perform Hajj, Ramadan preparation, and the last 10 nights of Ramadan uh, and Salah workshop. His workshops 
are supported by published audio presentations and printed books of numerous titles, including uh, Sarah I. Fidal, uh, Compassion of the Cave, and, and several others here. Uh, a number of things involved with community building through his entire life's work. Uh, moving on, uh, we have Dr. Craig Evans. Uh, 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 and I'll just apologize right now if some of these uh, words are mispronounced. But he is a Paisant Distinguished uh, uh, Professor of New Testament Acadia Uni Divinity College, Acadia University, in Wolfville, Wolfville, Nova Scotia, Canada. He carried a doctorate in Biblical Studies at Claremont Graduate uh, University in 1983 and a second doctorate at Kyola Gaspard Reform University in Budapest in 2009. Prior to his appointment at Acadia, he was visiting assistant professor of religious studies at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and for 21 years was professor of biblical studies at Trinity Western University in Langley, British Columbia, where for many years he, he chaired the religious studies department and directed the graduate program in biblical studies. He was also for one year a visiting fellow at Princeton Theological Seminary in Princeton, New Jersey. Professor Evans is author and editor of more than 61 books uh, among authored books are see and not to, to see and not perceive Isaiah 6 9 to 10 and early Jewish and Christian interpretation uh, he's got several other books in literature the titles here are very probably too numerous to mention but we, we will move on at this point and to say that we are very glad to have both gentlemen to be a part of our program tonight uh, they are well researched well read and certainly well studied uh, in a variety of places uh, in their native countries and all over the world uh, we're excited to have them here together tonight for 90 minutes as we go into our debate program. And at, 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 toward the end of that program, by the way, uh, if you're familiar with our format, you'll know that you'll have an opportunity to call our number at 248-416-1300, and that'll give you a chance to ask questions. However, before we get to that point, we'll let both uh, Sheikh Kareem Abdul-Zaid and Dr. Craig Evans say hello. Hello. Gentlemen. Good. Good to be Hello with you. there, and uh, uh, thank you for your uh, willingness to participate in the, in the debate tonight. Uh, we'll start off with an opening statement by uh, 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 Sheikh Kareem, and you have seven minutes to do, the, to do this, uh, seven minutes to uh, give an opening statement, uh, Sheikh, and uh, we'll start in the clock right now. By the way, 30 seconds before you're done, we're going to ring a little bell, uh, and we're going to uh, have you just be listening to that, and that'll be your cue to know that you have 30 seconds left uh, to finish what you're saying. Uh, that'll be for both of you gentlemen as we go through each of the time segments, whether it's an opening statement, a closing statement, a rebuttal, or whatever the commentary needs to be. So we're resetting the clock at this point, and we're going to get uh, Sheikh Kareem started. At this point, you may start, the, uh, you may start your opening statement right now. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله. Dear viewers, uh, peace, uh, Dr. Evans. It's a pleasure. Uh, Chris, it's Hello. always a pleasure talking to you. Um, I would like to begin uh, by saying. Um, really an introduction. Um, there is no other religion in the face of this earth which talks of Jesus. Peace be upon him, the messenger of Allah. Rather, we love him dearly. He's so beloved to Muslims. We believe when he comes back, he will actually wipe on the heads of the believers after, he has, after they have gone through the uh, trial and tribulations of the Antichrist. Our messenger told us, I am the closest to Jesus, the son of Mary. There is no prophet after me. There is no prophet between me and him. And he will come back to complete some of my work. Uh, the question is so simple. Was the Messiah... Isa crucified. Was he crucified? The answer is in chapter 4 of the Quran, chapter 4 of the Quran, verse number 157. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وقولهم إنا قتلنا المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول الله and they are uttering that we killed Isa the son of Maryam the messenger of Allah وما قتلوه وما صلبوه they killed him not they crucified him not ولكن شبه لهم but it was made to look like this for them وإن الذين اختلفوا فيه لفي شك منه and those who differed upon this issue they are full of doubts ما لهم به من علم إلا اتباع الظن they have no concrete knowledge regarding the matter but following but only following of conjunctures theories doubts وما قتلوه يقينا for sure absolutely not what happened to him Allah says in the next verse بَرَّفَعْنَهُ إِلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him to himself وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty, all-powerful. So at least uh, we Christians and Muslims, we believe that Prophet Isa alayhi salam was raised. But we do not believe that he was crucified. I really would like to say something, and, and I understand for a Christian, uh, this is too much. I understand. I'm basically saying no Christianity, because... Uh, the dogma of uh, crucifixion is the basis of the Christianity. Now, if I'm saying there is no crucifixion, that means I'm saying no, no, no Christianity, basically. So I understand the uh, amount of pressure that the viewers may be having because of me tonight, but I have no ill intention whatsoever. I was invited to explain the view of Quran uh, regarding the issue, view of Quran, view of Islam regarding the issue, and um, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I understand that uh, this subject is so sensitive, and I'll try to do my best to be as sensitive as possible. But also, I, I understand that whatever I quoted right now for a Christian is useless, because you do not believe that the uh, gospel is the word of Allah. Uh, I'm sorry, the Quran is the word of Allah. Uh, you do not believe in the message of Muhammad. So whatever I provided, really, of evidence is uh, baseless for the Christian's viewers. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go into uh, your own records, your own books, and prove to you tonight that in Masih, alayhi salam, the messenger of Allah, was not crucified. So I ask you to be kind to me and uh, to accept whatever I'm going to say. Again, I have no ill intention whatsoever. But I know there are some Muslims who are watching us right now, and I, I will, by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified and exalted, prove to them that this verse, which was revealed in the Quran, 600 years after the so-called crucifixion of Isa alayhi salam, carries a miracle. It proves, number one, that the Christians have no knowledge of what happened. And I'll prove this from their own books. This is number one. It proves also that they differed, and I will give you evidence that the Christians themselves, they differed regarding the issues uh, of uh, crucifixion. They don't have a clear cut. And I will show you this evidence from the uh, uh, history books, from the uh, New Testament in particular. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me. Uh, but in general, saying that uh, Al-Masih was not crucified for a Christian is... Too much, I understand. And for, because for a Christian from the get-go, they were brainstormed. Jesus Christ was crucified on Good Friday and he rose on Sunday. Every Sunday school, every week, from day one, Jesus Christ was crucified on Friday. Brainstormed. Actually, for a, for a, a Christian, it's a historic event. If you open a junior high history book, that covers the Middle East, you will find it talking about the crucifixion of Isa alayhi salam. So I understand for a Christian it's, but the reality is different. And this is what I'm inviting to open their minds. Consider this a theology class. Don't consider the debate. Search for the truth. Find where the truth is. I know that the clock is ticking. And by the way, I'm able to fix my Skype. So uh, Chris. So if you can uh, ask your helpers to contact me so we can, uh, I can be seen to the viewers, uh, I would appreciate it. I got somebody who fixed my Skype. So I'm going to go on uh, after basically my uh, segment. But in closing, I want to warn the brothers and sisters that are watching me, the bro don't take my creed from that debate. 
don't build my credit up from that debate. Thank you. Thank you for take, staying in a, uh, within the time frame, uh, Sheikh Karim. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we will. Uh, we may have to wait to the break before we adjust the issue with the Skype. But at this point now, we'll let our uh, Christian apologist, Dr. Craig Evans. You have seven minutes, uh, Dr. Evans. You may start right now. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you, Sheikh Karim, for your uh, very generous spirit. I appreciated many things that you said, and of course, as you expect, I don't agree with you on this point about crucifixion. I uh, do not deny the possibility that someone could have a great insight many hundreds of years later, or maybe learn a new truth, but I think you know how history works how historians make use of the oldest sources that we have access to, and that uh, unless there are extraordinarily unusual circumstances, older source, sources are always preferred to sources that are many centuries later. But I want to point out something and ask you to think about this. There was nothing about the crucifixion of Jesus that his followers desired. It wasn't something they looked forward to or wanted to happen. Even when Jesus warned his own disciples of his suffering and death, and even tried to assure them that on the third day he would be raised up, his disciples were not happy about that at all. Even his best known disciple, Simon Peter, uh, tried to discourage Jesus, even talk him out of it and was rebuked for it. So the crucifixion was not something that uh, the earliest uh, followers of Jesus thought was necessary or a good thing or inevitable. They were shocked, dismayed, and discouraged at even the thought of it. And in fact, when Jesus was arrested, they fled and they ran away. And it was only in the light of Easter, the resurrection, that they realized the crucifixion was not really a bad thing, but it was the saving death of Jesus on the cross that made salvation and atonement for humanity possible. And I think that needs to be said because there was nothing, I mean, today a cross worn around the neck on a chain has sentimental value. But the cross in the Roman, in the Roman Empire was an ugly symbol. It was not a good thing. Well, I, I just want to, you heard the opening statement, I'm sure, that uh, Chris read a few minutes ago. We have first century witnesses, the four New Testament gospels speak of Jesus's death on the cross. The apostle Paul knew some of Jesus's family members and uh, first apostles. He speaks of Jesus's death on the cross many times in his letters. But it is not until the second century that this uh, a Gnostic, a heretic uh, named Basilides, and Gnostics held to some very peculiar ideas which the church rightly rejected. Basilides wondered and speculated perhaps Jesus had traded places with someone else. Maybe it was Simon, the man from North Africa, helping him carry the cross. Perhaps it was he who was crucified and not Jesus. And there was this switch, and Jesus then sneaked away in the crowd and was unharmed. This same idea is represented in a, med a medieval uh, forgery called the Gospel of Barnabas. The same idea that perhaps it really wasn't Jesus at all and people were simply fooled. But are we to take a second century Gnostic testimony? Are we to take a medieval uh, forgery over four first century Gospels written within the lifetime of the eyewitnesses of Jesus? Would we take them over the witness of Paul who knew the eyewitnesses and wrote several letters only 20 years or so after the events, Jesus's death on the cross and then his resurrection? I find that a very strange way to argue. So it's not as though the cross was something Christians wanted or grabbed onto as, as an obvious uh, thing to embrace. Christians needed to understand its significance. It was a grim reality. It happened. It couldn't be denied, but it could be interpreted in terms of its saving value. And all of that seen in the light of Easter, which turned a discouraged and very uh, uh, um, unmotivated following, turned it into a dynamic movement 
that once again embraced the teaching of their master and recognized him for who he was as someone in whom God had worked marvelously and in a saving way, and they began to preach and proclaim him, and it was out of that that the church began. And so I, I think at the end of the day, if we're going to be historians, if we're going to be critical scholars, if we're going to teach in universities and engage in research, as historians and scholars do, then I think we must uh, give preference to early sources, multiple sources, over one source that someone wrote 600 years later. I mean no disparagement or discourtesy toward Muhammad or the Quran. I am suggesting that perhaps Muslim scholars take a new look at Shura 4, which you quoted, and interpret it perhaps not literally. Perhaps it has some mm -hmm. other meaning, but I don't think it is history in view of the other historical sources we have, which are numerous and quite early. And I think I can stop now and we can save a little bit of time. Thank okay, you. thank you, Dr. Evans. We appreciate that. There's no problem whatsoever with going at uh, getting uh, get dunning, getting done first uh, or initially or earlier. Easy for me to say. We have five minutes now for a rebuttal and we've reset the clock. And Sheikh, you may go ahead and start right now. You've got five minutes. Dr. Evans, I appreciate the spirit of your uh, debate. Thank you. Um, again, uh, I'm telling you, your books will prove that the Quran is authentic. The Quran said that you had no knowledge of it. I heard Dr. Evans saying, I witness, I witness to Jesus, but never been I witness to the event. It is established that the biblical scholars maintain that none of the so-called authors of the New Testament were present at the event, the so-called event of crucifixion of Jesus. Except John, uh, except John to be, you know, there is some wording there that says John. The first writing is the book of Matthew. It was 40 years after the event. The historians, Josephus, the Jewish historian, and the Roman historian Tacitus, also the writing is 50 years after the event. So simply, you stating, Dr. Evans, that we had eyewitness. Yes, maybe eyewitness <coughs> to Jesus, but eyewitness to the event? Absolutely not, and I don't think you can prove it. Add to this, we don't know simply what happened there. And this is what the Quran says, that you have no knowledge of it. You have no knowledge because you have not seen it. This is a, an event in order to prove it. You must have an eyewitness who reported it and it <coughs> was transferred or transmitted through an authentic chain of narration, like our hadith, which is the second source of our guidance. You see, 130 years after this event, it used to be said the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Luke, the gospel according to Mark, but never been, this is the statement of Mark, this is the statement of Matthew. You yourself, Dr. Evans, have testified that early Christians, there are books, early books, the Acts of John, Peter, and other books, they said absolutely the crucifixion never took place. And I'm glad you brought up the evidence of that predominant Coptic group in Egypt who were fought for actually promoting and teaching the fact that Simon, the son of Serene, the, uh, uh, the one who was crucified in the place of Jesus because he carried the cross and somehow he was taken there. And by the way, you omitted the fact that they said we got this from Simon Peter, the translator of the account of Simon Peter. They have enough evidence. So all these, ما لهم به من علم إلا اتباع الظن you only, your books confirm the verse, not negate it. Allah, Muhammad, the illiterate, 600 years after this event, he has no access to Google, he has no access to the gospel, says that the Christians had no knowledge of it, and it is true, because we had no first-hand eyewitness, Dr. Evans, and you cannot deny this. All your religion, Dr. Evans, is built on a hearsay. This said, he said, this said, he said. 
I ask you, and I ask the viewers tonight, Dr. Evans, how can you build your salvation? Your salvation, your salvation is in the crucifixion. I, 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 I love you. I fear for you. How can you build your salvation in a hearsay? Come on. Let's reason. Let's reason. This is important. And after my, I'll, I'll do the same and I'll spare some time as well. My next round, I will prove to you the miraculousness of the Quran, that the Quran is a miracle. And the Quran said that they differed upon it. And I will show you how they differed upon it. And I will provide for you, Dr. Evans, from the gospel, evidence that Jesus was never crucified. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sheikh. At this point right now, we've, uh, we're, we're cruising right along here. We're going to go to our first break of the evening. As a reminder, again, later on, those who are watching. And if you're watching right now, we appreciate the fact that you're tuning into our program on Debate Night today. And